Welcome back everybody! We are back here today in the kitchen and we got a really kind of extensive recipe for today. Um, it's actually, we're making uh, cinnamon rolls for my future father-in-law's birthday, which is actually today. And the reason that we are putting the video out on Saturday is because it's taking me two days to film this video because of the way that I like to prepare the cinnamon rolls. So, like I said, we're going to be making cinnamon rolls from Cinnabon. This is a copycat recipe. This is not sponsored. This is just a recipe that um, actually my aunt and uncle found out online and they make at their house, but they typically make it for the holidays. But, like I said, since it's my father-in-law's birthday, he really, really enjoys them. I'm going to make them for him. So let's get started. All right. So, the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need dry yeast, active dry yeast. Now, I don't typically use this brand. I typically use a brand that's called Red Star. Um, it's a brand that I've worked with a lot, and I know how to work with it and make sure that it actually blooms correctly. But it is a, a dry active yeast, and just all you got to do to activate it is follow the directions on the back of the package. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you how I activate them for this recipe. So what I've already done was is I've taken two packages of the yeast. Um, you can buy them at your local supermarket. And you're going to add one cup of warm water. And in the warm water, I would say between probably 105 to 115 degrees. Um, because if it's any higher or lower than that, it won't activate correctly and your, your yeast will just die. So I'll give you a look at the yeast that we're working with here. So this is what it looks like when it's fully bloomed. Um, and it starts to smell like beer is the best way I can describe it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the yeast and set it over close to our bowl so that we're ready. And then we are going to add two-thirds of a cup of white granulated sugar. We're going to add two teaspoons of salt. We're going to add two lightly beaten eggs into the bowl. Next, we're going to add one cup of warm milk. We use 2%. Um, I found that it makes it taste a little bit better. It doesn't kind of water it down like skim milk would or like, um, what's the other type of milk? Uh, 1%. All right, so then next we're going to add one stick plus two tablespoons of melted butter, which if you want to measure it out, it's two-thirds of a cup. So we're going to go ahead and add that in there. And we're just going to go ahead and mix this up and get this all combined. And you want to make sure that the warm butter does not start to scramble your eggs. That is not what you want. You don't like, you don't want scrambled eggs in your dough here. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take our yeast, and you can see it here. I'm going to go ahead and stir it up just to kind of get it all mixed through. And then we're going to take it, and we're going to pour it right into the bowl. And you want to make sure you scrape it down so you get all of the goodness out of the bowl. All right. So then we're just going to go ahead and mix that in. Now you're not looking to like whip this. You're not you're not trying to add volume to it. You're just trying to get it combined. Okay. So, now that we have all of this combined, we are going to go ahead and we're going to start adding all-purpose flour. And the recipe you're probably going to need anywhere between uh, six and eight cups of flour for this recipe, um, but always start 
small. Always go, I always do about four cups and see where we're at because you can always add more. You cannot take it out once it's in there. So we're going to go ahead and take this. And you're going to level it off and pour it in. So that's one. Two. And I don't really quite measure because, like I said, since we're adding just about half of it first, I know that later on we can make up the difference, even though I'm kind of spilling over, we can make that up later. All right, so that's number four. So let's go ahead and we're going to start stirring this together. Now this is going to start to form a very, very sticky mess. And that's what you're looking for. Now, like I said, I got this recipe from my aunt and uncle. And typically they do theirs in a KitchenAid. Which, I have a KitchenAid. And it's the largest one you can buy. But I don't like to use it for this recipe because I like to be able to control how much it stirs. Or, you know, how much it mixes. And later on, like once we start adding more... We are going to dump this out on the counter, and we are actually going to be kneading this. That was cup number five. So like I said, we're going to be kneading this dough, and I like to be able to feel it with my hands to tell how far along we really are. All right, so that was cup number six. Now, <laughs> if we can get a view up into the bowl here. Now it's starting to get real messy, and that's what we want, and it's going to start working together really nice, okay, all right. So once we get to about this stage here, we are going to dump it out onto the counter. And we are going to start kneading it. So let me wash my hands real quick. And I gotta get a little bit more flour because my jar ran out. Alright. So now what we're gonna do, get that out of the way. This over here, this over here. And we're just going to kind of sprinkle the counter with some flour here. We're going to go ahead and move the cell phone so that it doesn't get covered in flour. Alright, so we're just going to move this around so that it's not all in one area. And another trick that you can use that I like to use a lot is just taking butter spray and spraying your hands because then the dough will not stick to your hands and the butter spray won't hurt it. Alright, so we're going to get this out of the bowl here. Like so. Alright. And we're just going to start kneading it. Now the way you want to knead it is you want to fold over, press it out, and fold the opposite way. This way, this is how we're starting to build all of the flaky layers of the dough. So we're going to keep doing this. And you're going to want to knead for about anywhere between five and eight minutes. Um, it will start to form. And the other thing is, is you can keep adding flour to your uh, countertop so that your dough does not stick but you do not want to get carried away with the flour this is kind of the part where we add that extra two cups that we were talking about so you want to make sure that you're not adding too much flour to your countertop or your board or whatever you're kneading on here so we're just going to do this so we're going to keep kneading for about five minutes and when we come back, we'll show you how we're going to proof this.
because we have to proof it for a while. So we will show you that when we come back. All right, now we are back after we've been kneading for about seven or eight minutes. And this is what our dough looks like now. So what we're going to do is we're going to be proofing the dough, which means that we're going to let it rise and double in size so that that way then it's ready to be rolled out and then we can sprinkle the cinnamon, the sugar, and the pecans, which are optional. We aren't going to do those today, but if you like pecans, you can throw them in there. If you like raisins, you can throw them in there. I've even done chocolate chips. But, so this part here is going to be the proofing process. So what we've done is we got our metal bowl, and what I've done is, is I've sprayed it very, very well on the inside. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take our dough, and we're just going to start taking it, and we're going to fold it in under itself to make a ball here, just like that. And then we're going to drop it down in the bowl. And then we're going to take plastic wrap that I have already pre-sprayed in a circle, thus the top of the bowl, and we're going to put it right over top. And seal it up. Now the spray is just so that when this doubles in size the dough won't stick to the plastic wrap itself. It kind of will prevent that so that it's easier to get out of the bowl. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to throw it in our oven. The oven is set at 170 degrees and we're going to leave it in there for about, uh, about an hour. Um, you just got to kind of keep an eye on it. Once it doubles in size, you are ready to go. Um, the thing about it is that I'm going to leave it on 170 degrees for about the first 10 or 15 minutes, and then I'm just going to shut the oven off. Then don't open the door after that. Just let it sit there and proof for the rest of the time, and then when you come back after the hour, you'll notice that it is doubled in size and it's not starting to cook. You do not want this to cook. That's why I have it as low as my oven gets. Now, if you have a warming drawer on your oven, use it. I wish I did, but we don't. I, when I lived with my parents, their oven had an, a warming drawer on the bottom, and that thing was a lifesaver because you can just throw it in there for the hour, come back, it's perfect. So we're going to go ahead and throw this in there, and when we come back, we're going to show you how we're going to roll it out. We're going to show you how to make the mixture that goes on the inside, the cinnamon part. And then we're going to roll them, cut them, and we're going to put them in the pans. And we will be ready to go. Quick note, like I said, we are going to you know, roll it out. We're going to cut them up and put them in the pans. We're not going to bake them until tomorrow morning since it is getting later in the evening. But we will come back in the morning and I'll film that part and we'll show you the whole process because we also have to make frosting. So we'll see you when we come back after it's done proofing. Ah. All right, now we are back. We have let the dough proof for just about an hour. So what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and take our dough out here. As you can see, it has doubled in size. So what we're gonna do? Let's throw that up. All right. All right. So now we're gonna take this and we're just gonna dump it out. All right. So now I have put flour down on the counter, and I've also floured by rolling pin. What you're gonna want to do is you're just gonna want to start to roll this out and you want to roll it out evenly all the way around. You're, you're going to end up with a pretty big square here because this is a very large recipe of dough. Now I will put all of the ingredients down below in the com or in the description of the video but I will also tell you that it is very simple 
to cut this recipe in half so that you don't have to make a full size recipe like this. This is just the standard recipe that we use because when we make these, a lot of people eat them. All right, so what we're gonna do is, you wanna kind of form a square almost, just to make it a little easier here. And all of this excess flour, try not to get it in the dough because you don't really want it in the dough. All right, so this is our dough portion. So now we're gonna work on the filling. So in this bowl, I have two, uh, one and a half cups of brown sugar, and I have three tablespoons of ground cinnamon. And then over here, I have two full sticks of butter melted. I should have warned you in the beginning that this recipe has a lot of butter, but that's what makes them delicious. So we're going to take the butter and we're going to add it to the brown sugar and the cinnamon. And then we're going to take our spoon here, and we're just going to stir it up. Now, I do like this to be a lot thicker. This is going to be really, really thin. I like it to be thicker, and the, originally the recipe calls for you to put half the butter brushed on, and then you take the brown sugar cinnamon mixture, sprinkle it on, and then you drizzle the rest of the butter over top. Now, I don't like to do it that way because it just, it's more time consuming and it kind of makes more of a mess, but it's to each their own. So, like I said, I like this to be a little bit thicker since I am going to be spreading this like, almost like peanut butter almost. So I'm going to take this and add a little bit more brown sugar. And it's okay if it's got clumps because when it cooks, that's just going to melt everywhere and it's going to make the rolls really, really good. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to, so this is what it looks like. We're going to take this and we're just going to drizzle some on there. Not a whole lot. Now be careful because this might actually be really, really warm from the butter. What you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and spread it around. And since this is kind of liquidy, when you go to roll this, it's going to kind of leak everywhere. But I promise you that when you put it in the pan and you cook it, it it's going to be so gooey and delicious on the inside. It's so good. All right. So you're going to want to leave a little bit of room on this half here so that when we roll, we can seal it. And then it won't really fall apart. We're going to spread this everywhere. Maybe a little bit more over here. Alright. And you want to make sure that you spread it everywhere. Even all, like, all the way along these sides because these need love too. These are the ends that don't look the prettiest. Still taste just as good. Alright. Here. Alright, so I'm going to wash my hands real quick. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to carefully start to roll this, and it's always best to roll away from you because then you have more control over it. So we're going to pick this up. We're just going to start to do a tight roll. Now, you see how I'm taking it and I'm kind of flipping it over on itself. That's what you kind of want to do. Now, I will say, a word of warning, these cinnamon rolls are going to become very, very large. But that's what makes them super yummy. Right, so we're just going to keep rolling here. And you can see that the goop is starting to 
spread a little bit, but that's okay. That's why we left the room on that side there. Okay. So now we're going to take it and we're going to start to bring it all the way together. And then we're going to pinch this off so that that way none of the goodness leaks out. This one's got a little extra gooey. That's okay. All right. So it's not going to look the prettiest on top, but that's okay. So now the way that we are going to do this, and this is how I tend to cut them, is you take your good old 8-inch paring, or this is not a paring knife, 8-inch chef's knife like we used in the video on when I taught you how to do chopping, slicing, and dicing. So we're going to take this, and the way I like to do it is so that it's even. You take it and you cut the big roll in half, those halves in half, that one in half, that one in half, 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 and half. Same on this side. Alright, so now you have 16 rolls. So now we're going to grab our pan, and you're going to have to be a little careful because, like I said, it's gooey. So you're going to take them, and I tend to do two rows of four. Because when we bake the, or well, I should say before we bake these, we are going to proof them again. And they are going to get huge. Alright, so then we're going to take this one, put that there. Now this is a very messy process, but if you have kids and they like to make a mess in the kitchen, this is the perfect recipe that you can do with your kids. They're, they're a lot of fun and it teaches them patience because you got to wait for them to proof. So now we're going to grab our other pan and we're going to do the same thing. And I know a lot of people don't like the crazy looking end pieces because they don't look like a pretty cinnamon roll. But since nobody else in my house eats them, I eat them because they're just as good and can't go wrong. So now we're going to take the rest of this, we're just going to kind of sprinkle it over the top. You want to make sure you get all that goodness in there. and. Some of the one, some of the stuff that's left in the bowl, we can go ahead and maybe sprinkle just a little bit over both pans so that they all get love. All right. Alright, so that'll do it for this segment. So like I said, what we're going to do is, is we're going to go ahead and take these pans, we're going to wrap them in tin foil, and we're going to put them in the uh, refrigerator overnight, and then in the morning what we're going to do is, is we're going to proof them. So we're going to cut to the next scene, and it'll be in the morning, and uh, we'll get started on cooking them. So we'll be right back. Alright. Now we are back, and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to throw the cinnamon rolls into the oven. Um, I have let them proof already. Um, I let them proof for about 40 minutes, and they doubled in size, and I'll show you here. Alright, so this is what they look like now. So what we're going to do is we have our oven set for 350 degrees, and we're going to let them bake for about 25 minutes, or until golden brown. So I'm going to set this down real quick. And you want to make sure you put them in the middle of your oven. That way then they can get heat all the way around them. And they'll get done evenly. And they won't get too dark on the bottom or on the top. Alright, so now what we're going to work on is we're going to work on the icing. Alright, so in this bowl we have, this is three cups of powdered sugar. We're going to need about four cups total, but like I said with the flour, I can always add more, but you can't take it out. 
To this, we are going to add two teaspoons of vanilla. Okay. And then we're going to add one stick plus two tablespoons of butter or two thirds of a cup of butter. And I always use unsalted butter because it's just a lot better for you. And then it won't be too salty. All right, so now what we're doing is we're stirring in the butter. All right. And it'll start to combine. But we're also going to have to add about anywhere between four and eight tablespoons of hot water just to bring it all together. So you can see that it's starting to turn kind of like into like Play-Doh a little bit. That's okay. So now we're going to get our hot water. That's one. And I'm also going to be starting with just four tablespoons for right now, just to see where we're at. And then I am also going to add that fourth cup of powdered sugar so we have enough glaze for everything. So we're just going to start doing this. And it'll turn into glaze. Actually, we might not even use that fourth, that, that last cup. We're just going to leave it just like this. So this is our creamy glaze for on top. All right, so like I said, we're gonna let these bake for about 25, 30 minutes, and then, or until golden brown. Then we'll come back and we'll uh, put the icing on them and we'll enjoy, so we'll be right back. All right, guys, <clears throat> we are back for the last segment of this video. I want to start off by saying thanks for sticking with us. I know it's a long video. I know there's a lot to it. Um, but we made it through, and these things look phenomenal. And they are massive. They're huge. I'm going to give you a look because I just took them out of the oven, and we're going to ice them, and we're going to eat them. But here's a look at what we're working with. Look at how big these cinnamon rolls are. They are humongous. <clears throat> All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, and this is our icing that we made. I'm just gonna give it a stir real quick to mix it all back up. All right. And then, we're going to grab us a spoon. Now, there's different ways you can do this. You can actually put this into a piping bag. I don't like doing it that way because that's just more of a mess. But what we're going to do is we're going to start taking it. And we're just going to start drizzling it right over the top. And this stuff, this will make your house smell so good for so long. We... We got errands to do today. I guarantee you when we come home today, it's still going to smell like cinnamon. And I love the smell. All right. So there you guys have it. These are our cinnamon rolls that we made that are copycat from Cinnabon. Like I said, this is not sponsored, although I wish it was because I love Cinnabon cinnamon rolls. I make these all the time for my family and for other people at work and everything like that. So, like I said, I'm gonna put all of the um, ingredients that you'll need, like measure it out and everything, I'll put that down in the description so that if you wanna make this at home, you can. You just gotta refer back to the video on how we did everything. So, that'll do it for this week. Um, we are going to be filming um, Sunday and then we'll be posting it Monday 
and it'll be another baking item so stay tuned to that um, if you like this video smash the thumbs up button make sure you have or make sure you subscribe and make sure you have the notification bells turned on so that you know whenever I post alright guys well I hope you enjoyed we'll see you next time and remember stay hungry